So we're here for the Startup Hub and today's uh, topic for discussion is serial entrepreneurship uh, and also exit strategies, particularly today focused on acquisitions. And I'm delighted today to have a serial entrepreneur, uh, Freddie Tolberg, um, formerly of Pi Mapping uh, and still involved with Pi Mapping, uh, to talk to us about those topics today. So hi Freddie. Good morning. Um, before we start the conversation in, in detail, do you want to just give us a little bit of uh, your background? Because uh, before you got into sort of the startup world, you did a, you know, a few other things which led you into this, this yeah. kind of journey. Yes, that's right. I, um, I started in, in corporate life. I used to work for BT initially in telecom space as an engineer there and you know, worked in America and Israel. And, and then really is from there, I founded my first business. So I moved on to, to do my own thing after about six years in corporate life. And what, what was the, the driver that got you into you know, going down a route of entrepreneurship? I think I couldn't make a big enough impact in big companies. I really got on well with BT and all the people associated there. And, I, you know, and working in the States and Israel, I learned a lot about the, about the telecoms industry. But I just, knew, I just knew I could do so much more and wanted to do my own thing. Um, it, it, it was a moment of like in making sure I did something now before I had a regret about it. So, so it really was I either do it now or, or it won't happen. And as a serial entrepreneur, I mean, having done it once, what, what drove you to want to continue to do it again? Well, I think, you know, is, is, is the excitement and the buzz you get out of achieving success and actually selling something and the customer buying and, and, and building something. Um, that, that feeling is just amazing. And so, so it's, it's, it's a natural one for entrepreneurs to sort of just keep, keep doing that, whether it's selling telecom solutions or selling you know, maps or, 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 or selling anything. You know, 35% of, uh, sort of entrepreneurs who've done it once are encouraged to do it again. 35 is quite low. I thought that was quite low, um, <coughs> given that. But I mean, maybe there's, there's things that we'll talk about in a moment that uh, affect that. But what, what's your own view of that? The balance is how much money have you sort of made and do you really ever need to work again? Um, but, but I think, you know, getting back in the driver's seat, it's like once I handed the keys over to the business, it was a really weird feeling. You go, well, what do you do? You know, and, and then I think inherently, you know, I watched all the Harry Potter series after, after the acquisition and just sort of caught up with just, just myself a bit. And, um, and then you go, well, what, what can you do? And then, then naturally you're just not geared up to do nothing. I mean, what would be your sort of top tips to sort of serial entrepreneurs or people thinking about going down that route again? Well, I think, you know, I think the, the trouble with entrepreneurs is, is focus. You know, we, we can be a bit like all over the place. So, so I think one thing I would definitely do is make sure you focus and make sure the contribution of your effort goes in, in, in you know, the contribution of the, what you're doing is, is really the best use of your time. So, so, so focusing your energy and time on, on the right thing. Um, I think the, the, the other thing is people, is you do need people to be working on your business and, and, and with you. So I think it's people, focus, and, and also it's the most important thing is the customer. I tend to find the customer drives it all. And, um, and, and once you sort of get close to the customer and the customer's buying and understanding how you're adding value to them, then the whole thing starts to just fall into place. So Freddie, coming, coming to the point where you've decided you're going to sell, sell your business, um, obviously you know, there are a lot of factors to consider there. You've got customers, you've got partners, yeah. you've got staff, and you've got kind of investors. Um, could you just talk us through um, you know, the factors from your side from, of the due diligence process? It's, 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 it's complex, and um, you know, obviously there's a lot of stakeholders involved, um, but you know, it's just trying to juggle to keep everyone happy is really hard. And, um, and you know, so, so you, you have to focus on um, making sure, predominantly the focus is around the team, you know, that you want to make sure the team exists and they survive and, and continue and they're being well looked after. Um, and then it's a matter of the, there's a lot of investor pressure from for the different investors because we had corporate venture capitalists, but VCs and angels. And um, we have this, the scenario where we had preference shares linked in to, 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 to that cap table. Uh, and, and that created a lot of challenges in terms of how we nut out the best sort of deal for everyone. Well, Freddie, thanks a lot for coming and talking to us. And that's been really interesting. And uh, I know, you know, for a fact, we could talk for hours. Yes, so right. uh, I wish you a lot of luck with uh, whatever it is that you do next. Thank you.